Hello, I'm Waffles or Better. In this video, I'll be showing you how binary works and how you can use it in Minecraft. If you already know how to read binary and how to use it in Minecraft, I'll put timestamps in the description so you can skip to the parts about how to build an encoder and decoders to translate signals from binary to several different outputs and from several different inputs to binary. To represent zeros and ones in Minecraft, Unpowered redstone current will be zeros, and powered redstone current will be ones. That means this display of redstone lamps here can be considered a binary number. Each of these lamps represents a one or a zero. The unpowered ones are zeros, and the powered ones are ones. Every zero or one in a binary number is called a bit. If you extend it to eight bits, it's now a byte. Each byte can represent a number up to 255. Each bit is assigned a value starting from right to left. The rightmost bit is worth 1, and that value doubles every time you move 1 to the left. So the second bit to the right is worth 2, the third bit to the right is worth 4, the fourth bit to the right is worth 8, and so on. The way to convert numbers from binary form to decimal form is to just add up the value of all the digits that have a 1 and not a 0. So for example, this number has a 32, a 4, and a 1, which means its value is 37. But depending on what you want your code to do, you may also want to use punctuation or letters instead of numbers. So using the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, or the ASCII, you can choose to interpret the numbers 33 through 126 as specific symbols, punctuation, the digits 0 through 9, and the 26 characters of the English alphabet in capital and lowercase. So whether this binary sequence represents in decimal the number 37 or in ASCII the percent sign depends on how you choose to interpret it in your computer. For example, depending on how you built your redstone contraption, this sequence is either the number 65 or a capital letter A. This is either 113 or a lowercase q. This is either 53 or the digit 5. And this is either 33 or an exclamation mark. You're going to want to interpret binary sequences as decimal numbers if you're making a calculator, and if you're making anything that has a display, you're going to want to use the ASCII system because it has letters and punctuation, and is better for displaying numbers if you have any two-digit numbers or higher. So as you can see here, I have the number 1, and if I want my computer to be able to decode that into something it can use, I need to build a decoder. All the decoder needs to do is to be able to invert the signal from the redstone line that is going to be powered for your number. So for example, in this number, since it's one, it's only going to be this redstone line right here, and then connect it with all the other redstone lines. So to do that, I'm just going to create a little torch circuit on this line that will make sure that this top torch right here is unpowered whenever this line is powered. And then for all these other lines, we want to not invert the signal, but just to bring it up to the same level as this torch. So then we can just build this for all the lines that we want to be unpowered when this line is powered for this number. Then once all these are in, you can just build up a line at the top that will connect all of the signals. And then just put redstone all along the top here. Make sure you don't miss any. And this is actually 15, so I need to delete this block right here. If this is longer than 15, because of the way you built it, you can just put in some repeaters. And then you just want to put a redstone torch here to invert the signal. So this way, uh, when this light is on, and only when this light is on, this torch will be on. So if you turn on any other one of these lights, then this line will be powered, and this torch will turn off, because this will bring the signal up and power this redstone line, and if you turn all of the lights off, then the torch will also be powered off, because then this torch will be on, and it will power this redstone. And if you turn just any other of these lamps on, then this will still be powered, and the torch will still be off. So if you want to decode another sequence, maybe the number 2, then all you need to do is extend this out, just by adding some repeaters on the back side of these blocks. Oops. And as you can see, this one turns on because this block is being powered by this redstone line. And then all you need to do is just build up another uh, sequence of decoders like so. Because you want this line to be on instead of this line, you just want to build the inverter here instead of there like you did last time. And then you just want to carry up all the signals for all of these blocks and this block just like we did over here. 
So I've done that and it looks like this now. So now all you need to do is to just extend this line all the way back and then also build the redstone on top and then just put a torch here. Then as you can see this torch is on because this line is on but if I switch it back to this line then this torch is on because only this one's on. Then if you want it to be more than one line like this all you need to do is just build up the inverter for both of the lines that you want to be inverted and then just carry up the signals normally for all of the other lines. Then you can make this decoder as long as you want and you can have an output for every single different combination of signals that are possible if you want. But this opens up a lot of possibilities for saving space in signals because like if you wanted to have a signal for every different letter in the alphabet for like some sort of display screen then you wouldn't have to have 26 different redstone lines leading to the display screen. You'd only have to have like eight. Converting a single input into a binary signal is much easier than decoding. You can place a block with a torch on its side so the torch powers any line that is above it and then do the same thing on any other line that you want to be powered. And then you can connect them with the repeater to make sure that they both turn off when you run the input in. And you can make the input a uh, signal inverter by just placing a torch on the back of a block. And then you can place a lever on the side or on the top to make it so that it turns off whenever the lever is on. So I've built this to show why the encoder and decoder system can be helpful. As you can see, I have eight input levers and eight output lamps. And the eight inputs are condensed into only three signals and then... Uh, re-decoded into eight signals just so it's easier to transport the information. To show that this works, you can see that the first lamp is on because the first lever is on. So if I switch that to the last lever, then you can see that the last lamp turns on. And then if I go back and switch it to one of the middle levers, you can see that the middle lamp turns on. So that means using this instead of eight different wires, you only need to use three. So that's all you really need to know to start using binary in Minecraft. In the future, I'm planning on doing more tutorials like this, so if you want to see those, you might want to consider subscribing. If you have any questions about anything I've covered in this video, you can ask me that in the comments. And if you have any ideas for future videos or things you want me to cover in the future, you can tell me that in the comments as well. And thanks for watching.